People generally like boxes and they like categories. The world feels more comfortable when they can put people in them. Um, but there's some people who just don't fit into boxes and categories. And I think it's my job as an artist to evolve and go to war with my art and constantly question it and find new genres and sometimes you have to create them. And I think there's other people out there who are at their in their own wars with their own art and I like to find them and I like to go to battle with them and I like to collaborate with them. I'm IFBB Olympian Rachel Daniels and this is a day in my life. This is my life. Okay. <laughs> What's up guys? Rachel Daniels here, aka the real Lois Lane. We're here today back in my home city, Tampa, Florida, at my home gym, MI40, best gym in the world. I'm just back for the weekend, so I put on a quick little pop-up posing seminar with just a couple of people. So I'm really excited today to be back in my hometown with the local people, local competitors, and just bodybuilding enthusiasts who want to learn more about their posing. So today we're just gonna work on our posing and do what we love. I've done a lot of seminars with like a lot of people and those are great because you know you, you want to get a lot of people in and want to help a lot of people but sometimes if it's too many people it's it's very hard to give everyone individualized attention it's not posing isn't one size fits all so you can't just get a big group and stand in front of them and show them how you do your poses and then be like, all right, everyone go do what I just did. I've seen some athletes do that, and that's not, to me, I don't think that's the best the best way. Um, everyone's front double bicep is different. Everyone's back double bicep is different. So my point is, uh, I wanted to kind of have a smaller group today of like only 20 people so that I could have more individualized time with everybody and really get, my, my goal is not to just stand up here and like be like, watch me pose, look how cool I look. I really want the person to walk away with some um, newfound knowledge about their own posing so they can be like this pose looks this is the pose that I'm going to use on stage because this is the pose that looks the best on my body and I worked with somebody who looked at my body and didn't just put me in their favorite bodybuilders pose so um, that's ultimately what you want and that's what I think the, the biggest difference is between like a good poser and a good teacher there's a lot of good posers but um, can you can you articulate your knowledge to somebody in the way that they're going to be able to not just interpret it and understand it, but apply it um, in a manner that is going to benefit them on stage. So it's a big game changer and that's something I'd like to see more from posing coaches in the industry. Uh, but I can only speak for myself and that's what I was trying to do here today and that's what I try to do with all my clients individually as well as at seminars. So I had everyone from different categories today, which is great. I love I like that bikini girls come out, I like that men's physique guys come out, I like that we get all the different categories out here. And it's a good sense of camaraderie and uh, it's just good to have a dialogue going. That's why I always start my seminars with kind of like a, a Q&A &A and, and not a Q&A of like, hi, I'm Rachel, here are my stats, here are the shows I've won. Um, I see a, a lot of that too. And, and that the, the athletes coming to your posing seminars already know who you are. That's why they're there. <laughs> So I like to open the floor up more in a sense of like, what are some things that you guys have wanted to talk to pros about, but you haven't gotten a chance to? Um, let's get a you know let's get a dialogue going between the pros and the amateurs and just other bodybuilders in general, so we can kind of strengthen the camaraderie thing and and make make it a safe place. It's if you know anything about posing, you know it's a very vulnerable and hard thing, and it's it's kind of like public speaking. It's, it's borderline embarrassing um, and nerve-wracking at the beginning, especially if you're asking someone, you're openly asking someone to like take their pants off and get in their underwear in front of a bunch of people and and move around. Like that's that's nerve-wracking. So if you can if you can put everyone in a safe a safe place um, to where you can make them as comfortable as possible in an uncomfortable situation, that's when you're really going to see a poser start growing and learning and interpreting knowledge. If you can eliminate the outside distractions of them thinking, oh my God, that person's looking at me. Oh my God, I'm fat. Oh my God, what if I look stupid? What if I fuck up? There's a camera guy there. If you can eliminate all that and put someone in a safe place, it's to where they can be vulnerable as a posing coach and that's your job. 
and then put a little bit of pressure on them later on once they develop technique. That's when you're going to start seeing people make artistic breakthroughs and um, really coming into their own and absorbing the knowledge that you're giving them instead of making them feel like they're just being put on the spot like at a circus show. So would you say that that is one of the bigger challenges as a posing coach? Yeah, I would say a lot of this is, um, I mean, teaching someone's body to go in a certain place is, is not the hardest part. Uh, being a teacher, a posing coach teacher, I would say is more, there's a big psychological aspect to it. Uh, if you can set the tone for a good environment, you can see people's demeanors immediately change. If you can get somebody relaxed and you can get them comfortable and get them in a place to where they feel like they're not gonna look stupid um, and nobody's judging them. If you can get them to a place where they feel like, hey bro, I see, I see this all the time, I do this all the time, I'm not gonna judge you, you're in a safe place. If you fuck up, nobody's gonna laugh at you and you can get them to really believe that. That's where you're gonna see somebody really start making progress. Um, and you get better at it as you go, you know what I mean? But people will read your energy pretty easily. So you have to set that tone and you have to be a leader in that sense. But yeah, it's a, it's a huge part of poses and coaching. And I'd say a reason a lot of people um, can't get their athletes into the poses they want is because they just don't really know how to adapt to each person's cues. Like one person's not going to respond to the same cue as the next. So if you're a coach and you're out here throwing the same cues at all of your athletes, a lot of them aren't going to get it, and then that's when you see those coaches getting frustrated, and then they kind of just keep screaming the same shit at them. It's like you're trying to teach a dog how to sit, and like, maybe one dog, if you put your hand up in the air and go like this, they sit, or maybe another dog needs to hear you say the word sit, to sit. So some people are, are visual, and some people are audio learners, and it's different. Some people are written learners. So if you keep throwing the same cue at people, different people, and they're not, they don't, they don't get it. They're just gonna get frustrated, and they're gonna start to get nervous, and then they're gonna start to feel like an idiot, and then you're gonna, you're gonna lose them. Um, yeah. So it's a huge part of it, setting the stage for a comfortable environment, not throwing too many cues on a person at once. That's why seminars are kind of hard sometimes because you're trying to give everyone all the knowledge you have at once, and like that's not how I work. Like. With a client, I might spend a whole session individually on a back double bicep if we need, to, you know what I mean? So taking 10 poses in, in, in one session with a bunch of people, that can get difficult. So you don't want to overwhelm people with cues. Um, you don't want to run them into the ground. And yeah, putting them in a safe place to work on their art is more important than anything. So, you know, you're... <laughs> so you're, you're, you know, big enough, well-known enough that you don't have to just work one-on-one -on -one with people and maybe do some online YouTube videos or whatever it may be. But you choose to do public clinics. Like this is your time this week. Mm -hmm. But you're here. You're like, hey, I'm gonna do a public clinic. Yeah. Um, you do those all the time by choice. So what is it that you get out of the posing clinics? What makes it so special and valuable to you to do this? Well, I mean, it's, it's honestly just the, uh, the camaraderie of it and not everybody is going to get to, to pose with me on an individual level, even though I try to, to try, try to get everyone in that I can. So um, I, when I first started doing seminars, I really didn't see a lot of athletes doing a lot of seminars. Um, and I didn't see them, the ones I did see doing seminars weren't being done in a way that I thought was very effective. Um, not that I'm saying anyone was doing them wrong, I just saw uh, an opportunity where I thought, like, hmm, how, I think back to how I was when I was an amateur and the type of, I didn't have help in posing, I, I figured it out for myself and I did a lot of research, but like I try to put myself back in that mindset of what would, what would have really helped me um, that I didn't have, like, where did I do extra work in certain areas where I, where I could have had, it would have been really beneficial to have some sort of mentor come in and, and teach me. So I try to put myself in that athlete's um, mentality and then I try to give that to them, which is what I try to do with these seminars, where I try to you know, set the tone for a safe space by, by opening the floor of a dialogue, um, breaking everyone into groups, working with them individually, bringing them back together at the end. 
flipping them around, like mock show call outs. That's, that's something a lot of people don't get to do before. Staying after, communicating with the athletes, talking to them, asking them when their first show is, asking them about themselves, not having the amateurs always ask the pros, you know, things about them. That really, that, you know, treating people on different levels of bodybuilding with the same respect that you want as an Olympian or a pro that is not owed to you just because you have that title. So I think that's important, um, you know, putting the posing aside, just having pro athletes that a lot of people look up to, getting them out there and interacting with amateurs, interacting with gym owners, interacting with, you know, videographers, photographers, uh, that we're all in the same industry so we can start humanizing ourselves and, um, and helping each other. I, I, did, I didn't start teaching posing or uh, bodybuilding with the idea that I wanted to help anybody. I just wanted to kind of help myself be a better person. Um, but the more I do this, the more I do get a, a certain amount of gratification from, from helping others, um, seeing them have their moments on stage because I know how important my moments are on stage. Uh, and those moments are the most important thing, things to me, the moments I've had closing and the moments I've had on stage. And if you can help another person get to anywhere close near close to that that sort of euphoria and happiness by helping them with their art then it's kind of a disservice um, if you don't if you don't do that so. so it's more about making us all equals not just teaching but I wouldn't say equals nobody's I don't think anybody's equal but um, I think there's a certain sense of um, humi humility and we need to humanize humanize the pros and the Olympians a little bit more um, instead of trying to put them up on a pedestal and make them just seem like perfect people who've never been through anything uh, that doesn't really that's not really gonna help an amateur who's looking at you on Instagram if they see somebody who looks perfect all the time and they think like oh wow this person is an Olympian they probably have never cheated on their diet they probably had a great family great upbringing probably always had a lot of money to afford this never had a bad day in their life uh, perfect genetics, probably never had their heart broken or a bad relationship, otherwise they wouldn't have made it. So that's the kind of standard you're setting to people who are just starting out in bodybuilding. If you're a pro and you're just you know, posting perfect things all the time and being very politically correct, and I'm not sharing, saying you have to share all your deep, dark secrets with the world, but um, I don't think what helps people the most is shoving the idea of perfection or, or the facade of perfection down people's throats all the time um, and making them feel lesser than you because that's all you're really doing because if you look at it 99% of the world is not a lead 99% of the world 100% of the world is not perfect so what we should be doing is showing them hey I'm an imperfect person just like you I've been broke I've gotten my heart broken I've got fired I've had shitty things happen to me but the difference between me and you is I have already found a way to take all that pain and all those bad things that happened to me and do something incredible with them regardless. So if you can show a person, hey, I'm just like you and I did all this shit, that's gonna inspire somebody and motivate them more when they can feel, wow, that's relatable, rather than saying, we're totally different circumstances and that's why I made it and that's why we're here. That's, that, that's the hack and that's how you help people. It's not by shoving the perfection down their face. It's, it's shoving the imperfection down their face and humanizing yourself and saying like, I'm not better than you. I've been through the same shit you have been and this is the path I chose and you also have the opportunity to choose that path and get where I am if you choose it. And sometimes that's the message that just one person needs to do something great. They just need like a little bit of ridiculous courage and like, what if you're the person <laughs> What if you're the person that can give that to them? Like, why wouldn't you do that? You know what I mean? So overall, everything went great. Overall, everything went great. Um, I'll probably come back here and do a bigger one. I just did this last second, but um, yeah, I like to help my gym when I can and help the people here. I've posed with a lot of them individually already, so it's really cool that they like took time out of their day to come back and pose with me when I was in town. Um, yeah, so all in all, I shouldn't have gone. <laughs> yeah. Good shit. Cool.